If you've kept up with the Tideway project this summer, then you'll know that tunnelling on the super sewer is finished. And we celebrated this huge achievement with a live musical performance, 60 metres underground. This was our biggest construction milestone to date. We used six giant tunnelling machines, like this one here, but much bigger, to build the full 25 kilometre super sewer from Acton storm tanks to Abbey Mills pumping station, as well as two small connection tunnels here in Wandsworth and here in Greenwich. Excavating more than four million tonnes of spoil in the process. Well, today we're going to tell the story of the tunnelling from start to finish. My name's Taylor Geel and this is Tunnel Vision. On this episode of Tunnel Vision, we're talking about tunnelling, about why we need half a dozen gigantic tunnelling machines to build the super sewer, and about how dangerous it can be working that far underground. But first, let's head back to the summer of 2018. Britain was in the midst of a heatwave. England's men were en route to the knockout stages of the Football World Cup, and Tideway was preparing to lower its first tunnel boring machines its TBMs, deep underground in Battersea. These first two TBMs, Millicent, named after suffragist Millicent Fawcett, and Ursula, named after Dr. Audrey Ursula Smith, were both lowered 53 metres, or one Nelson's column, into the ground. The lowering of these TBMs was a huge operation, with each of the front cutter head sections weighing 850 tonnes. And by the start of 2019, three of the four TBMs being used on the super sewer were underground. But hang on. Why do we need so many machines? Could we have not dug the full super sewer with a single TBM? In China, for example, the 24 and a half kilometre Pinglu tunnel was created with a single machine. Why do we need four for the main tunnel? To answer that question, here's Tideway's chief technical officer, Roger Bailey. The geology changes and our tunnel boring machines are specifically set up in order to be optimised to, to dig in the different ground conditions. We have tunnel diameters that vary from 7.2 metres finished diameter uh, down to 2.5. In the west it's in London clay. When we go down to the east uh, at Abbey Mills in East London uh, the tunnel is very much deeper, 70 metres deep and it's in chalk. In the middle, when we pass through the Houses of Parliament, we're down in a mixture of clays and sands and gravels. We use two different types of tunnel boring machine, an earth pressure balance machine and a slurry machine. The earth pressure balance machine is generally used where we have a cohesive ground conditions like clay, so in the west in the London clay, where you've got uh, non-cohesive ground like sands and chalk you've then got a more closed face machine. The cutter head breaks up the material. It forms into a slurry place, like a, like a very thick liquid. Um, that can't be taken out on a conveyor, so it's pumped out through pipelines all the way through the tunnel and out to the surface. There's a significant amount of treatment to that to get rid of the water out of it. So you have water on the one hand and you have a sort of paste, like toothpaste on the other hand, that goes away for disposal. We're working pretty deep on this project. In Acton, our shaft is around 30 metres deep, which is around the same height as the tallest tower here at the Tower of London. But that's actually our shallowest shaft. The further east you travel along the super sewer, the deeper you go. This means that the tunnel is built on a slight decline, allowing the flows to travel eastward to be treated using gravity. Our deepest sites are an incredible 60 metres underground, or around the same height as the towers on Tower Bridge. You might think that working deep underground would be really dangerous with a huge number of potential risks. Flooding, lack of oxygen, gas ingress, not to mention the sheer height. But actually, we work really hard to make sure the people down there are as safe as possible. Let's hear exactly how we do that from Rachel Tompkins, Tideway's Head of Assurance, Securities and Facilities. Rachel, could you tell us about your role on the project? Currently, I'm heading up Assurance, Security and Facilities which essentially means we're, I'm leading the teams who are making sure that we're doing the right things in a health, safety, environment and quality space. This episode is all about tunnelling, so could you tell us what it's like to work deep underground in our tunnels? 
Construction sites themselves are inherently risky places to work with the plant and equipment, hazardous materials, but tunnels in particular, working at height above them because they're up to 60 metres deep. And then down in the tunnels, you know, got oxygen level issues potentially. Um, they could be flooded and there could be fire or explosion risk while people are working down there. It sounds like these tunnels can be quite dangerous places potentially. How do we keep people safe when they're working underground? The journey starts right at the beginning of someone starting on the project and we have a full day immersion training for health and safety. But when people start on site they then have um, site inductions and that talks about the layout of the site, um, what hazards there may be uh, and also the, the behaviours that are expected of people. We have very specific training for tunnelling um, ensuring that people are safe underground. And also kit and equipment is really important. For example, because of potentially low oxygen levels, people have rebreathers, which enable them, obviously, if the oxygen levels were low, to, to safely leave the tunnel um, until they get up to the, the land surface. Tunnelling is finished on Tideway. We've got a little bit more secondary lining to do in the east, but we are so close to an exciting new phase of our work, including building the new public parks that will be left once we're done. If you want to be part of this amazing journey to clean up the River Thames, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Tunnel Vision.